OK, all right. Well, hopefully I can see my screen, but thank you all for joining today. I think we have a little bit of a smaller crowd today, but that's OK. It can be a bit more uh, intimate of a conversation. You know, feel free to come off mute. But yes, this is uh, Samantha Kernel Public Community Office Hours. Uh, I've already lost track how many this is, but we are we are keeping the show going. Uh, I think a lot of people may be on vacation right now, so that's OK. Uh, but we have several questions already submitted in uh, as always, right? Feel free to in the chat uh, add some questions live that you want us to, to cover. Uh, we'll we'll try our best to, to get uh, get to them. Um, and also, if you want to just come off mute to kind of add some additional commentary or even answer a question that we see, uh, please do so. And yeah, we are happy to to engage on anything that that you'd like to for us to cover within the realm of large language models, AIs, semantic kernel, uh, of course. So uh, without further ado, I have my guest host today, Abby, uh, to joining us. So Abby, do you want to say a couple words? Yeah, so I am coming from the development team for semantic kernel. I focus primarily on Python, but I've been heavily involved in memory design and architecture and memory connectors. Very good, very good. Yes, Abby's been doing a ton of work. Uh, you'll see her name all over GitHub. OK, so we can get started. So just to to share out what's the latest, uh, we have some new videos out uh, to kind of give you all a more you know, guided introduction to several of the things that we have in Semantic Kernel. Last week, we talked about a new planner that, that got added. Uh, the stepwise planner uh, in .NET. And uh, this past week, right, we had uh, Teresa and Mark walk us through different things like the Copilot chat, uh, as well as the VS Code extension uh, in, in semantic, or the semantic kernel VS Code extension the, called the semantic kernel tools. So certainly would encourage you all to, to check those videos out if you haven't already. Um, and let us know uh, how you want us to improve those specific uh, apps and services, and we can definitely uh, get to that. Uh, the other thing to call out is we have a new dev blog that, that just uh, got released uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so John uh, Meta talked to the CEO of WeV8. So WeV8, if you don't know, is one of the uh, vector data stores, vector databases uh, that we have an integration for with the semantic kernel. So definitely encourage you to to read that interview. Uh, I think it could be some uh, interesting uh, discussion there. And of course, you know, if you all have a uh, project you'd like to to cover or just share out, please just reach out to us. Uh, you know, uh, share the share your work on Discord. Uh, certainly, if there's a uh, integration as well that makes sense for potentially a semantic kernel to to have, you know, we'd we'd also be uh, open to, to discussing that too. All right, so without further ado, let's go into some questions. So Aditya asks, uh, or states, <laughs> Azure Cognitive Search uh, as vector store for semantic kernel. So Abby, do you want to give a quick update, or at least where, where are we at on bringing Azure Cognitive Search to SK? So I, I actually don't know the state of the official NuGet package for Azure Cognitive Search. Uh, we do have memory connectors waiting or updates staged for, for PR. We are waiting for the, or last I knew, we were waiting for official packages to be released up from the team, both on Python and .NET. I've been out for the last two weeks, so I'm a little, I'm catching up a bit as well on the latest news here. Yeah, so we do have a PR out. Um, as Abby mm -hmm. mentioned, the package is, to my knowledge, currently not publicly available or mm -hmm. within the next couple weeks or so it will be. Uh, so we've been a little hesitant to release this functionality out yet. But yeah, I mean, if I would say it's it's in the works. We are 
we for sure want to have this be be integrated. Uh, it's part of this full like end to end picture of what a I guess Microsoft Copilot stack solution would look like. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. But please continue to upvote this or you know let us know if this yeah, is what I'll you really would like want to see. Sorry, Jorge, do you want to say something? Or okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, if, no worries. Uh, leave it in the chat if you if you want to leave some comments. Okay, so we have this next question. So this is from Prasad. So and he, he gives a, a few examples here. So I split it up into two. But it's like, how to train the semantic kernel? Uh, using different sort of planner steps. So OK, so give some examples. So he has a query, which is uh, please send $10 to a top performing employee. So the steps would be something along the lines of getting that from the SQL database, creating an Amazon gift card, making an entry into some database for accounting purposes, and then sending an email with the gift card. Uh, so I mean, I think and he gives a couple other uh, examples here. So, so he says, how can we solve all these queries in a generic way? As a large language model should be able to understand the process and give the response uh, for the planner. How can we train the model with all these knowledge bases? Do you mind if I pop in? Go for it. So I think the term train here is a bit of a misnomer. I think it's how do we give the semantic kernel all of the knowledge sources to be able to execute the correct response through the planner. Uh, training implies that you're going, you are fine tuning or creating a new model on the back end for the semantic kernel to interact with. So I just want to be very careful about the terminology here. Uh, the connectors that we have and can offer or you can develop yourself will be the main source of what the planner pulls from. So you'd probably have something along the lines of a SQL database connector. You might have, let's see, uh, we have something about analyzing employee details. I imagine that might come from SQL. And of course we mentioned the top performing employees. Creating an Amazon gift card, perhaps you'd have something along the lines of gift card skill and or an Amazon skill that uh, I, I don't know if you can with a simple set of REST API calls, create an Amazon gift card. But if you can, you would do that through a skill. Uh, internal salary database, that would also go likely be some sort of database skill. And then we, I believe we do have an email skill in our core skills, but that's also something you could set up yourself. Um, so at the end of the day, skills plugins are the ways that you tell the semantic kernel, here's what you have access to, here's how you can manipulate your query to do something. And then the planner, in theory, could generate a sequence of calls to make that all possible. Let's uh, question, can you use a native skill for send money to top performing employee? Uh, absolutely, You there's going to need to be some custom native skill happening here. I don't think we want to ship something in the core dealing with someone's uh, company's personal financial details, but absolutely a custom native skill can be created to send money to your top core employee. Uh, it doesn't have to be done through the planner. Yeah, a lot of this is probably some element of custom logic. Uh, maybe you can, let's say, ha have a generic SQL generating skill that you point to some relational database and it can run queries for you or generate queries for you that you can run. Um, but yeah, as Abby said, like a lot of this, if there's custom logic, my sense would be yes, that should be expressed as a native function that you can wrap together inside a native skill slash plug plugin. Uh, we are going to be moving more towards plugins, so <laughs> uh, expect to hear that type of terminology uh, more often. Uh, but yes, so if you're trying to do, especially these kind of uh, like fetching from a database type 
queries or, or things. Uh, making a native skill to do that, a native function to do that, uh, is the way to go. And then you just use a semantic kernel to orchestrate all these things. Planner can help, or especially when you want to uh, not have to explicitly define or uh, say like, oh, run functions X, Y, Z, uh, and then do that yourself. Uh, planner would be a good candidate to be like, okay, this is what the the ask is or the query is. Like using the uh, plugins and skills that you have available to you, you know which ones uh, or AI help decide which functions to call and in, in what order. Um, obviously, if you're going to be <laughs> sending transactions or you know ordering gift cards, things like that. You may want to be. You may be a little hesitant to just rely completely on AI to 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 plan and you know determine that. Uh, so you know you have to introduce introduce your own sort of checks uh, for that. Great. Again, if anyone wants to come off mute or or leave some. Uh, questions in the chat, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I will move on to this next one. OK, so we have uh, Tan Moy. Uh, this person asks, I have a scenario where I want page page-wise summarization of large PDF files, for example, 70 pages. For that, I have used native functions to read content from PDF page-wise in text using C Sharp's PDF pig library. For summarization, I'm passing the extracted text of each page to semantic function using Azure OpenAI. The problem is I am doing summarization inside native functions, looping PDF pages, and passing text to semantic functions for summarization. I don't want my native function to call a semantic function. Rather, how can I use the semantic orchestrator where I can pass the PDF file path as input, execute my native function, and my orchestrator will call semantic function for each PDF page? finally returning me the result. I'm just rereading the question. <laughs> pass the PDF file path. OK, pass, pass the PDF file path as input. Execute my native function. OK, so I think so. From what I gather uh, from this question, this to me, like like what we were discussing earlier about, you know, defining an X Y Z chain, let's say, of native and and semantic functions, uh, this would actually be like a good candidate for like this is a a workflow of like read from a file path, you know, load in the 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 text data from from a PDF and then run your uh, consecutive functions after that. Um, that would be yeah, a good candidate for for you know, ex explicitly defining a pipeline that mixes native and semantic functions. If you want to use this PDF pig library, um, go for it. But so but the so Temoy asks, the problem is I'm doing summarization inside the native function. OK, so yes. Uh, you can do that, I guess, because um, native functions, you could put any sort of code or, or logic inside that. But probably what you may want to do is have the native function just be explicitly, what do you want to call it, uh, reserved for doing one task, like reading a, a document. And then you take that, the text from that document, and you pipe it into the, to the semantic function. Uh, that is for summarizing. Um, you could use one of the the example skills that we have uh, released in the kernel, uh, or you can write your own summarization semantic skill. Yeah, I don't know, Abby. Do you want to? Is there any more do you want to add to this? Or or uh, Tem Temo is here, so <laughs> if you want to come off mute and and uh, share some more of, of your thoughts. I see uh, yeah, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I was looking for like uh, every native function 
should should follow single responsibility principle. So suppose if I am using native function, that will only only uh, do native things, and semantic will actually call the API, open API, and get me the summarization. So I just want to have this chaining where we are using kernel chaining, right? Calling semantic function, native function in chaining wise. So I want to understand like 70 pages when I'm, how can I uh, dissect the 70 pages and put in one loop? My orchestrator will actually loop through pages and pass it to the semantic function and get me the results. Rather than my native function is doing chunking and sending to cement, calling the semantic function. You, you're getting the point, right? I think we have an example somewhere of taking a chunk of text and running something along the lines of summarize over the n number of chunks that you get from that text. Is that something that you're looking for? Chunking I already achieved, Abby. Uh, one thing I want, like like uh, Alex has already put in uh, single responsible principle, like if native function is doing something the native function should not call any semantic function. Its only responsibility is to chunking. And semantic function responsibility is to call the open API and get me the summarization. Now, who is who will control all this? Like if I write my logic in native function and semantic function to summarize from open API, the orchestrator can help me out to, to coordinate between these two functions. Like where I can use rather than looping myself, looping 70 pages and calling 70 times my semantic function. There should be something in orchestrator which will act. I will just tell them like this is the file path. Give me the summarization and I want page by summarization. Then my. My native function will go page by summarization and give it give it finally calling the semantic function and give me the result back. Is there any way I can do it? So I, I would say maybe not out of the box, like we, as Abby mentioned, we have the chunking capabilities, but something like, let's say you wanted to operate on each page of this PDF document. Um, I don't think we have a page wise delimiter or separation right now. So this would be some functionality you have to implement in a, in a native function, let's say. So the, the ask would be like, you know, here is a file path of a PDF document, you know, summarize it page by page, right? Um, page by page is a specific way to summarize, right? You could, you know, it's it's not it's not the only way, right? Um, and but so this page by page page piece needs to be implemented. And then yes, once you uh, once you do that, I believe, yeah, you should be able to in in a single orchestrator without needing the need of a for loop. Although maybe a for loop might be easier to just like debug and control. I don't. Um, but yeah, that might be able to to do what you want. Yeah, yeah, that that I that part I have already achieved, Alex. Like using for loop and do some relation that is working fine. But the only thing is, my native function is doing too many things. Rather than only chunking the PDF file, it is also calling semantic function. So, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I the last piece I would add. I, actually, never mind. I think it would it would confuse you more because you can call the native functions inside your semantic functions, but following the principle of like yes, semantic functions should be reserved for one purpose. I think it's a good design to be like yeah. given a piece of text, just summarize it. Yeah. And then and then you, you know, concatenate all those results uh, later. I got this idea from actually the tech skills, which we already have, where we are just file, sorry, file IO skills, where we are just passing the file file path and we can just tell whether to read or write and just pass the content and it will do its stuff. I don't have to do anything. The orchestrator is like, it is just doing it. Similar thing if we can have. OK, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Alex, we should capture this as a, um, a a sample that we should build some some best practices because I think we're getting asked this quite a bit. 
large yeah. documents and how we like to handle them. I think that Lee has some examples that I probably aren't publicly published at the moment, but basically you create a a template of, I guess, actions, I suppose you'd call it, and those actions get run on effectively n number of times. So you'd be running a native function, I guess you could call it, n number of times on and PDF pages, and then you can, uh, what's the word, summarize or conglomerate the results from those n semantic functions together. I think that's closer to what you're looking for, Tenmoy. And um, a similar question was asked a few weeks ago, totally different application, but I think the same logic could be applied here where you're not, you don't have a for loop in your native function. You just have a plan that effectively runs end or a plan that has end steps of the same step. Okay, uh, I know this won't answer in the call, but yeah, let, uh, I'll work with the team to, to publish a, a best practices summary here for, uh, for you, DTF. Yes, sounds good. And please keep uh, giving us these uh, these use cases. I think they help guide our, our samples. OK, so we have Sandeep here asking, is it possible to exclude specific skills inside Action Planner? The answer is, because I saw the code some time ago, is yes, you can. But I need to figure out where to where to find that. Happy to, I think it's you just to a know? parameter during construction, I think. It's a good way to a list of skills to exclude from the plan request as stepwise. I saw parameters for like uh, other types of planners, but could not find one for action planner. So. OK. Perhaps that's something that if it's missing, very we can easily add. Yeah, I'm actually putting that into the prompt itself saying exclude these two skills. That's how I'm doing it, but I was trying to see if there is an elegant way of doing it. See, I don't know if this so if in the example for the stepwise planner, which was is which is the new planner again that that yeah. uh, Lee added, inside this config, which might work for you all, like as it, he's using a stepwise planner config actually for this, and then excluding a function inside there. So this this where I'm I'm not super sure on this like the the C sharp plan object model whether you can just use this config across all the planners. I don't think you can. So I did find exclude uh, parameters for stepwise and sequential, but there was none for action. So. Mm -hmm. Shannon, I think we might need to take this as an action to investigate. If it's missing, we should add it. Maybe do you want me to create a GitHub issue for this? Track it? Yes, yes, yes. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, and then we, we can put it on our backlog. Yes, Excellent. thanks for calling it out. It should, because and it should be a tag Microsoft. Fix. Sorry, I was going to say, if you could tag Microsoft Shannon in that GitHub issue, that'd be great. Okay. I'll crack it from there. Abby, you're Sounds right. Good. Uh, I see Nico on the chat. Nico, it's not too late to submit questions. Um, yes, you can just put it. You can just copy paste it here on the chat, and we can go over it. But yes, it's never too late. All right. Uh, next. Questions from Scott. What is on the near? What is on the horizon for semantic kernel in the near term? For example, skills of plugins. So yes, as mentioned, we are going to be converging towards this term called plugins. Uh, I apologize, even I'm I'm still using the word skills uh, quite interchangeably. But uh, yes, it is it is going to happen. We are going to refactor things, uh, rename things. Uh, but and the reason why is because. 
just Microsoft as a whole is centralizing around this term. Uh, OpenAI, uh, our our partner, right, is is also using this term a lot. So we want to just make sure that we have one term to encapsulate this uh, uh. this idea. Uh, yeah, anything? OK, so what else, what, what else is on the horizon for semantic kernel in the near term? So the best way to find out is to go to our projects. And we have a few public boards. Uh, we have the, norm, the main board, semantic kernel. We have Java, and we have apps and services. So you can see on a week by week basis what is uh, being worked on, and you can. I don't know if there's a way to comment directly on these issues from the public, but these are all issues if they're here. So you can always click on, let's say, like one of these, go to the issue, and then you know, give your commentary there. Um, in terms of concretely things that are happening in near term, is I'm looking forward to seeing Java come. Uh, out, you know, the team is working hard, uh, iterating on the Java branch, experimental branch, um, and soon this should be available. What else is happening from the Python side? Right, Abby is actually working directly on the bringing the plan object model uh, to Python. So all these great planners that you're seeing in C sharp, uh, soon there will also be the you know, the Python. Um, version. Uh, what else? Shannon or Abby, you want to call out anything else happening near term? Let's see. So we've gotten some requests for streaming. So you could probably see that we can stream results from OpenAI, but you won't see those results on when executing a skill. So we are looking at on the final, you know, so let's say you have, you're executing a plan or a set of uh, plugin skills, your final response, we do want to be able to stream that. That's something that is in the pipeline. Uh, telemetry is a big one that is currently in work. Let's see, better er error handling on .NET. Uh, we are improving that story. Um, adding logit bias as a parameter for your uh, your AI service for Python is coming soon. That's already been added to .NET. And let's see, token aware limit templating is something that we'd like to have done soon. It's not quite planned yet, but I would expect to see that within the next couple of months. And uh, better handling for rate limits. Sounds good. Shannon, anything you want to call out from things that the community can expect in the near term? No, I think uh, Abby did a great job talking about this. Um, Alex, I dropped a uh, survey link in chat to you. Um, it's not on this board yet, but there's some other features coming up that I'd love to have the community here give us feedback on. So if you don't mind sharing that um, about exception handling, we're looking for a little bit of understanding of how people are using exception handling, and uh, this will go direct direct to the uh, development team. Yes, I will bring up that form and also put it on Discord for people to see. Great. Uh, actually, let me just pull it up so I don't forget. Ah, very simple. Yes, two questions. Um, It'll expand out to five if you uh, if you are actually using exception. But we're going to try and do these micro surveys, and uh, I'd love to be able to share them in this forum, and and this will give everybody here an insight into the things we're trying to figure out next as well. Great. Very good. I dropped it in the chat. I'll put it on Discord as well. 
OK, so we got a question from YouTube, actually. So Nishant Kumar, he asks, I want to upload text and requirement is to do retrieval augmented generation, RAG. Uh, summarize and then Q&A for the Copilot chatbot. I didn't find any good demo for this. Uh, there's a lot of demos on LangChain, but not on Semantic Kernel. Uh, so this pattern of uploading text, summarizing it, Q and A. We for, for sure we sorry we for sure have bits and pieces of this, if not you know a fuller story inside the Copilot chat sample, and as called out actually at the beginning, right? I would definitely encourage you to look at this. Um, this walkthrough uh, where Teresa and I uh, do a pretty in-depth uh, analysis or in-depth walkthrough of the entire Copilot chat app. Uh, oh, sorry. In particular, there's also, there's this link. Uh, I wish I had it on hand. Um, I'm just going to do a, a search. GitHub, RAG, Azure, Semantic Kernel. Ah, perfect. This is exactly the one I wanted. Thank you, Bing. Uh, so this is the one that I would also link to or or point to, um, which is yes, a ChatGPT enterprise data with Semantic Kernel, OpenAI, and Azure Cognitive Search. Um, so this is a Azure sample. Uh, our teammates Gina and Adrian worked on this. So if this is, you know, works for you or is, is interesting, uh, yeah, please let us know and, you know, we can try to promote this more, more prominently. Yes, yeah, so this idea yeah, is very much uh, requested. It is the probably one of the most popular um, applications for large language models. So hopefully between the Copilot chat and this Azure sample, it's something to get you started with. But if it's if it's uh, deficient in any way, or if you want some more things, just please uh, let us know. OK, so I brought Nico's question in. So Nico asks, uh, is there a way to see available skills and connectors? Specifically, I'm looking for service tree ADO integration. Yeah, so okay. So then the, in the chat it says, what do you mean by available skills and connectors? Uh, put in your kernel ins, but all available is not totally visible. Yeah. Um, so basically what I'm asking, I guess, is there's no registration that you have of everything everybody's implemented because there's mentions of Microsoft uh, 365 Copilot. Uh, there's email. There's uh, a demo with ADO in it, um, and just trying not to. Uh, the 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 one of the selling points was to reuse skills and and stuff that other people had so what's the discovery mess is there a gallery or a, a a mechanism to discover these um because um my uh, app would be about uh browsing through service tree data and 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 trying to evaluate some metadata on that that would be part of the part of the task yeah so uh, i i can i can speak to it a little bit um this is a great uh, example of where we want to go in the future, where we imagine a world where not just Microsoft, but all these other teams, uh, third party teams, even the open source uh, community will be writing plugins, will be writing functions and all that. And there can be something like a marketplace where you can just discover, you can download a starter pack, if you will, of, I don't know, health skills, health functions, health plugins, finance plugins, et cetera. So you don't have to implement those things yourself. Uh, for now, yeah, we we allow we allow you to import them if they are defined in some way. Uh, we are one uh, one big thing or the reason why we're centralizing on plugins is we want to unify that story around around 
uh, if you have like a ChatGPT plugin, right, um, or some that already exists, right, you can bring that into the semantic kernel. You can use that in your own apps, uh, you know, very easily and interchangeably, and vice versa too. If you have uh, semantic functions or native functions that you've written, you've created a plugin for that. You could also publish those to ChatGPT if you want. So that's a long-winded way to say it is on our longer term roadmap. Obviously we have to figure out like how to design and and do these things. But um it's a, it's a future that I certainly would, you know, would want to have. I don't know, Shannon or Abby, you wanna add any more to that? I think once we get these basics working, we should be all over that. Yep, for sure. I think I skipped over a question. I literally had it. Oh, it's because I over <laughs> I overwrote it. Um, Okay, well, there, there's this other question from Jorge uh, about if if I can just summarize it, um, or if Jorge, you're, you're on the call, so you can you can uh, talk about it. But basically, the question was: there's some other projects from Microsoft that are uh, that have come out recently. Uh, one is around Orca, which is a like new open source large language model, and the other is called Cody. Um, oh, dang it, I had the links. Uh, maybe if I go back to history, nope, don't know how to do that. Um, anyway, so th there's these other open source projects uh, that exist. Again, I'll use the power of Bing to do this. Orca, LLM, Microsoft. Archive. Hope it's this first one. Anyway, so anyway, so there are new projects coming out and uh, new large language models that you know fall under the the umbrella of open source um, contributions, uh, even coming from Microsoft. So the question is, how do we integrate these different projects with the semantic kernel or use them? The short answer is we support an interface, right, for you to bring in your own text completion models. Um, you can uh, obviously uh, implement that interface and and use which whichever model you want, whether that be a model that's hosted behind some API or one that you're running locally and you, you know, deploy yourself. Um, for Cody specifically, uh, I believe that is, I don't know if this is actually the right one, so Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about to, from what I saw, I'm not super aware of this. It's a it's about image, audio, and video generation, I believe. So this is fitting, or this is under the 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 bucket or category of uh, multimodal models, which is actually something that I'm for sure personally very interested in. Uh, we have some bits of that inside the semantic kernel today. Uh, you can see we have a uh, uh, what where is it? We have an image generation. We have we, we have support for Dolly um, inside the notebook. We have a notebook for it. So in a similar vein, right? The it's just an interface, right? Uh, it's an image image generation service in this case, um, but Right. If if there is a model like Cody that you want to use, um, you would just implement that uh, to to uh, to use with the semantic kernel. So yeah. So I would invite you all to try it. Uh, I think right now the the multimodal pieces. If we if we were to you know just kind of uh, prioritize things, right now we're just trying to make sure we land and support everything to do with large language models first. Uh, 
and making sure that you know planner and all these things um, work well. It's, it's plugins and planners uh, that we're really like focusing on. Um, but yes, like down the line, fully expect us to to do more work uh, on the audio generation side, video generation side, image generation side as well. And you could just use semantic kernel for or orchestrating all of that. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so Sam asks, and might have already been covered in chat, but copied it, paste it over. Is there a way to use a stepwise planner in the Copilot sample app? I didn't look at chat yet. Yes, I did respond to this one in chat. It's not fully enabled, but I believe that the links should give a trivial example on how to add it to the Copilot sample. Yeah, I saw. I took a look. It looks pretty straightforward. So yeah, thanks for that. Sure. Of course. So Sam also asks, is it easy to use OpenAI plugins in the Copilot sample app? Uh, the answer is yes, hopefully. <laughs> right, we support several plugins that you can use today. I think I've seen like Klarna, I've seen GitHub, I've seen some other ones as well. So. Do you have any yeah. links for that? That Alex, it'd be nice to put those in the chat as well. I or Shannon. Have it. Yeah, and kind of to add to that, um, we're thinking about creating our own kind of plugins for our um, like finance fin apps uh, space. Um, so I guess the question is like, once we develop those apps, do we put the manifest JSON on the the server and then kind of point somehow point semantic kernel to that, or how how do you kind of plug into the the API once we create it? So hopefully this is this answer your question. But if you already have a like a URL that you can point to, mm -hmm. you can directly import it and turn it into a skill um, inside the kernel. Oh, cool. Okay. So that makes so sense. that's that's what we're using, I believe, for the Klarna one. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I think that answers my second question. Um, yeah. So. And the third one, OK, awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Uh, the third one is the action planner. I was playing around with it, and I was trying to understand how it was working. But uh, the step, the plan steps, but in the plan steps, it only shows kind of the action, thought, um, observation, those kind of things. But it didn't show, I was trying to see what the prompts were that were being sent to the, the large language model, and I couldn't figure out a way to kind of view that. Um, is there a way to do that? So there's no good way to do that at the moment unless you log them in your logger manually. That is Got it. Okay. and something else that we are looking at making exposed a little better. We do have to be careful in that if we expose it too well, these prompts that are getting sent to the AI, there is a potential to have PIA in them. So we don't want to, we're just being very careful about how we design the, your visibility into what actually gets sent to the model. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool, so I'm looking, so it looks like that's, those are all the questions that we currently have. Scrolling up on chat. Go ahead, Sam. Sorry, I, I had one more. This is kind of a uh, different, different uh, um, thread, but I'm uh, looking at like um, prompt flow and AML and wondering how that could integrate to semantic kernel. Uh, looks like they support link chain, but only um, there's two approaches that they show in a documentation. One is just uh, you just create a Python node and just write all of your link chain all in that one node and just kind of call it like that. Um, the other way is to kind of extract some of the prompts out of link chain components and kind of um, use prompt flow to kind of fine tune the prompts in that way. But you kind of lose some of the uh, the recursive nature of link chain sometimes, like where you have, you know, um, the the action thought observation kind of loop. You can't really do that if you extract the prompts out. 
So I was wondering, is there plans to, um, I guess first is, is there plans to create that like looping logic? And you might not have the answer to that. Um, I guess the second question is, is semantic kernel kind of supported in a similar way where it would have a Python node to just run semantic kernel in the node um, or, you know, extract some prompts and have that flow? Um, so yeah, just kind of open in a question there. So from the prompt flow side, uh, from what I know is the, um, they publicly said in build that right, the roadmap is to support orchestrators like LangChain, Semantic Kernel, exactly how they do that. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't have those details myself. Um, but in terms of like what functionality you'd like, you know, one common thing that I've heard is, yeah, people would like to see, it, it kind of goes back to the logging thing, like a way both for Python, C Sharp, et cetera, to just see the prompts that are being sent to the large language model at every step or any step of the, of the process. So as mentioned, yes, this is something that we need to think about how we exactly do. Uh, we don't want to just do the naive, like show everything, um, or at least we have to justify, you know, why uh, we should do that. Um, but yeah, that's that that's from that side, and I imagine that's relevant to the prompt flow overall discussion. Other than that, I I don't I'm not sure if I have anything to add there, Abby or Shannon. Yeah, Sandeep saying he, he got access to prompt flow, but no lane chain or SK in it yet. So it's being worked on, um, I guess. Okay, so okay. we have, yeah, for sure. So we have about eight minutes left. If anyone wants to, you know, free form discussion, we don't have any more scheduled questions. Uh, feel free to come off mute. Say hi. This is a great forum for us to just hear direct feedback of like what do you like, what you don't like about SK. Um, so please, yeah, let us know. Or what are some cool things? I, I'll ask you all. <laughs> what are some cool things that you're building with Semantic Kernel? Um. So I guess one thing was when I was playing with Action Planner, I think you might have uh, covered this before, um, I had to kind of uh, adjust the, to the resulting or return token limit because um, every once in a while it kind of hit it and say, oh, you hit your token max um, and it just kind of fail. Um, did you say that it's going to automatically adjust the, the prompt itself and then adjust the output token accordingly so that it, it doesn't fail in that way? Did you say specifically action planner? Yeah, or... specifically action planner, but I guess any planner probably have the same problem where you're generating a prompt and then sometimes the prompt's too big. And you know, when you add the prompt to the uh, the token window that you want returned, it's more than the max allowed by the model and then it fails in that way. So um, it, it sounded like there was some uh, change to the code in the pipeline that's gonna be um, you know, automatically adjust for that. I think what you're referring to, Sam, is uh, I mentioned earlier that token limit aware templating is something that is high on our list. Uh -huh. I can link the GitHub issue that we have open. Uh, it is something that we are actively trying to design, having discussions around. I don't have a good estimate for when it will be completed, but it is definitely top of mind. Okay, great. Yeah, that was one thing that I kept running into when I was testing it out. A lot of people run into it. Yeah. All right, last five minutes. Anything?
actually one thing that I saw in the chat that Casey mentioned is uh, hierarchical planning. Uh, Casey, do you want to maybe chat a little bit about what you mean by that? I have an idea, but I but like to hear uh, from from your perspective. Yeah, definitely. Um, primarily is uh, in relation to uh, Hanmoy, I want to say it was, uh, what he was looking to do. Um, and by the hierarchical planning, I was just meaning um, the ability to generate something like a plan for running through several things, uh, a loop or run through N steps and um, possibly take the output from one into the other. But it seems like that's actually being done and wouldn't actually require uh, hierarchical planning, um, just sequential and the ability to loop over those, which it sounds from Abby's response is something that's being done in at least one of the examples that already exists. If it's not being done in one of the examples that exists, uh, Shannon, let's take a note to make an example for that. Cool. Yeah, and if there are, if there's a desire, uh, for sure, just raise an issue too, and we will capture that as well. So oh, certainly, and like I said earlier in the chat, I'm excited for the Python Palm because that's what I've been. I've been spending the majority of my time over uh, in the Python side, not the C sharp side. So once Palm's in place, uh, looking to do the stepwise planner and possibly think about some other planners that would make sense and run them by you guys. Cool. Yeah, please. Looking forward to it. All right, Constant, you have the last question. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, sorry for joining late. I just received the invitation uh, from uh, someone in my team. Uh, I have a question. I'm not sure whether you guys can help me here, but I, you, you are one of my last hopes. Um, <laughs> so plugins, building custom plugins, of course, targeting semantic kernel behind the scenes. As you might remember, at, at MS Build, we were presented an experience built into Azure AI Studio, embedding prompt flow, blah, blah, where teams can uh, refine their prompts, they can build their orchestrations, and at the very end, you can deploy uh, the whole thing as a plugin under a web service. Yeah. So I tried uh, with various uh, leadership agents in uh, Azure AI, Open AI. I reach out, they have a team called plugins that you might be aware of. So they build plugins, but when I reach out to them, they told me that they are not interested in building custom plugins. So I'm totally confused. Who is responsible for that experience that was presented for us at MS Build at this time, the the embedding of uh, prompt flow into Azure AI Studio. So I'm I'm getting reassurance that that team should be responsible for this. But when I hear that they are not willing to consider custom plugin developments, I'm I'm uh, I'm at loss here. I'm I I don't know how to figure this, how to reconcile these uh, messages. So do you know what team is responsible for custom plugin development? And uh, yeah. My understanding is generally if a team wants a custom plugin, it is that team's responsibility to create it or work with someone who is willing to create it for them. But what happened to the prompt flow uh, embedding into Azure AI Studio? And how, what happened to the to the copilot stack that was presented to us that was telling us that the plugin should be deployed as a web service. Who 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 provides the support for publishing a custom plugin as a web service? Do we have a team for this or not? So yeah, I would say this might be worth taking more offline, um, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's an internal type conversation for, for Microsoft. Yeah. But publicly, I think the idea, and we talked about this earlier today, is. Like the vision is to have a 
plugin marketplace, if you will, uh, that mm -hmm. semantic kernel will be like the core infrastructure to enable. Mm -hmm. uh, it may it won't necessarily own the development of all 3P plugins, but you can imagine, as Abby said, if a customer or a person develops the plugin, they could publish it onto the marketplace. And maybe the marketplace is something semantic kernel owns. Again, I don't know. Uh, but once it's there, right? Yeah, you can you can host them. You can you can deploy a a a web service uh, if you want. Uh, you, you can even so do, do that. Today. Do you have an example for this on how to deploy a, an orchestration build with semantic kernel as a as a web service? Do you have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what we use for Copilot Chat today for our sample, okay. and it is uh, trying to look for it, but. You could okay. basically spin up an Azure function that hosts the semantic yes. kernel and exposes yeah. the different skills and plugins available to it. And then you can mm -hmm. just directly call them with HTTP requests. Can you so. share the sample with the, with me or with us at some point? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll pull out the samples. Excellent. Okay, yes. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for PromFlow, I suppose that you guys work uh, very closely with PromFlow, right? Because they are target you. You are one of their main targets. You and Langchain, correct? For orchestration, for AI orchestrations. So, correct. do you have yes. any contacts in uh, PromFlow that you can share, please? Uh, so, yeah. I let's follow that up with this off offline. Yes. Uh, well, whenever, whenever you can. Yeah, feel free yeah. to reach out to me directly if you if you can. Yeah, so That's I'm I'm confused because I saw something at MS Build and uh, apparently no one is following up on them. The plugin team in Azure OpenAI is mainly dedicated to coming up with their out of the box plugins, mm -hmm. as you might know, one for uh, I don't know Cosmos DB, one for SQL, Azure Search, Bing Search, and Microsoft Translator, and that's it. They are going to have a private preview around around these five out of the box um, uh, plugins, but nothing for custom plugin development, and that was a surprise. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank thanks a lot. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Abby. I'm looking hey. forward to, for for your samples so we can play with the web service version of a of a plugin. I mean, we we know how to integrate plugins through reflection today so we can inject this into a copilot canvas but we would like to experiment with the web service based plugins too thank you yes of course of course um uh, before we i just want to yeah sorry i want to add to what okay. Constantine is asking for um yeah i like to get connected to PromFlow. my understanding is um you could use PromFlow to deploy and you know Make that a, a basically like a plugin, um, and then within PromptFlow, you're just using prompts to you know do your things like summarize documents or whatever you want to use an LLM model and Python code kind of together for. Um, my understanding is that um, if you want to create a custom plugin using PromptFlow, you would have to have like your own like team or team of vendors kind of work on the development, but maybe use PromptFlow as the tool. Um, that that's what um, I got from the the last build announcement. Yes, overall, we will figure out the reconciliation with PromptFlow, Semantic Kernel, and okay. all this. Um, Excellent. If Abby didn't find the code, this is what I, I at least know of. So if you go to Copilot Chat, just mm -hmm. look at the Azure, the, the AI service piece, I believe, maybe. Uh, I see. Or app settings. Somewhere around here, you will find the answer to your perfect. Like perfect. how 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 does a service get stood up that a application like Copilot Chat can make use of the custom okay. plugins and skills? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, samples yes. and apps. Yep, yeah, that was the last link I was looking for. I'll put that in as well. Okay, really so appreciate. Yeah. For recording sake, kernel HTTP server. Wonderful. So that's, one. And that's what we need. Yes, the example ChatGPT plugins that we talked about earlier. Well, I I hope that you guys will converge with PromptFlow at some point. So this this step will be covered through tooling support rather than us uh, 
uh, independent teams having to to replicate the process. But yeah, we we will take whatever you give us. No, for now. Thank That's you very good. much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Thanks for tuning yep. in. Uh, join us next time for future office hours. All right. Take care. We'll do. Thank you. Take, take care.